I've used a huge variety of cameras and lenses and now I will explain you the principles that underlie the choice of budget photography equipment for wildlife. The price from 1 to 3000 euros for the whole kit is the best value for money. What about second-hand photo equipment? Well, I'm doing wildlife photography for decades and I have never owned new cameras or lenses in my life because I don't want to spend money on something that won't bring me a monetary profit. I operate optics in extreme conditions and I like to try different water equipment. When assessing the budget, I ask you to take into account that the equipment may break down. You may want to buy accessories such as tripod, filters, batteries, memory cards, drones. If you want to break into commercial wildlife photography, I want to warn you, it's impossible to earn money in wildlife photography, at least without putting your whole life on it. Photo stocks already have all the good shots, artificial neural network will make better pictures for a lower price, photo exhibitions are crap, and the best photo of the wild animal already exists. Other focus, if you want to test your skills, you can use manual optics. The possibilities of modern mirrorless cameras have uh, renewed interest in manual optics. But still, I don't recommend you to do it because it's pretty hard. Stabilization. In most cases, it will come in handy. You don't have to mess with a tripod. It's much cheaper to buy a stabilized lens and set a lower shutter speed than to purchase fast, heavy optics. Much means a difference of 10,000 euros. You should multiply by the crop factor not only the focal length of the lens, but also the aperture number. If you google, you will find the opposite statement. But uh, you can just believe me or take your time and effort to sort out this unpleasant situation. Then no one will be able to tell you that Olympus 300mm f4 is the same as full frame 600mm f4. And this statement is equally true for crop sensors, post-processing in applications, and teleconverters. This is generally the most important thing you need to understand. Weight and size matters. The purpose of wildlife photography is to enjoy the process. Huge lenses will not only stay at home due to the fact that you don't want to take them with you, but also they are more difficult to use. And don't forget that on the plane the lens should be carried only in hand luggage. Focal length of 600mm is not needed because of the heat distortion. I faced this problem all the time regardless of the location and the time of the year. Don't use full frame lenses on cropped bodies. Before the era of mirrorless cameras this was relevant. Now it makes no sense. Also don't use speed boosters or adapters if you have no idea how do they work? Teleconverters. In the budget specified in the video, photo drops in an image processing application will always look better than a similar picture taken using a teleconverter. Add here problems with autofocus, low light intensity, and the cost of a teleconverter. Prime or zoom? Prime lenses are faster, lighter, more expensive, more pleasant to use, more reliable, usual autofocus is better. They're usually sharper and they teach you how to use both eyes when photographing, which is a mandatory skill for dynamic scenes like bird in flight. <laughs> Mirrorless cropped cameras are uncomfortable in hand because of their size, but nothing critical, not worth mentioning at all. We're not talking about professional photography here. Our sharpness is not accidentally at the end of the list. It's not all about sharpness. Oh, that's it. 